Rear Admiral John Newton, who has just assumed command of the Halifax-based East Coast Navy. It is the top military job in the city the Admiral considers his hometown, and his promotion, incidentally, roughly coincides with the appointment of a new defense minister, Rob Nicholson, who today replaced Peter McKay in that role. Well, we'll be talking to Mr. Nicholson at some point. We're very pleased to be speaking with the Admiral, John Newton, here tonight. Welcome, and let me say welcome home. Oh, it's great to be home, Stephen. Nice to see you again. And Good to see you, too. Uh, you've spent most of your Navy career in Halifax. You've obviously developed a great love for, for this place, uh, but what is it like to come home as commander of the Navy? It's a thrill. It's a thrill to have uh, grown up here since I was a uh, living in a bassinet in the back of a car coming from Victoria to Halifax as less than one year old to have grown up with uh, people who are now in academics, uh, business, uh, uh, in the government and uh, come home and work with those people on the uh, maritime and security affairs in the region. Mm. And uh, to have learned the environment over all these years as a base commander and uh, as an operations leader, I, I, I feel it's, a, it's, it's been a privilege to have that much exposure to one area. It is in your blood. You're the son of a Navy man. Your dad was a chief petty officer. What would he think? to see his son, and it's not on your, on your collar now, your lapels now, but there'll be two Leafs on there. Everybody knows what that means in the parlance of, uh, yes. of the Yes, two Maple Leafs, and yeah. uh, he's so proud it's almost killing him. <laughs> he's, if he's watching now um, that you've even mentioned him, it's going to send him into another world that'll take me forever to get him off, out of that tree. <laughs> <laughs> he is very proud. Before your posting back to Ottawa, you were in fact the commander of CFB Halifax. What's the difference between being the base commander and being the commander of the East Coast Navy, practically? Well, the biggest one is when you go in the boardroom and you're sitting with all your senior lever leaders like the base commander and the ship repair unit commander and the fleet commander and the people like the 12-wing commander and Land Force Atlantic Area commander, and you look around the room, there's nobody behind your shoulder, <laughs> <laughs> you know, watching over your decisions and sure. uh, providing you the counsel, and it's a long way away as in Ottawa. Not everybody realizes that being commander of the East Coast Navy involves all of those other uh, those other branches. It isn't just Navy. You've got airmen. You've got uh, you've got soldiers. Right. So the, they're uh, all in there. The big one is the uh, Joint Task Force Atlantic commanding right. commander role. I wear that hat, and uh, and when the government tasks us to a mission in domestic or continental security, I'm I take leadership of all those air and land forces in the in the area. Uh, as commander of Base Halifax, uh, Peter McKay was a frequent visitor on your real estate. There, are you going to miss him? I'm going to miss him a lot. A fine, fine minister, served uh, the defense team for six years, and uh, uh, dedication, professionalism, lived through some of the hardest years we've felt since the Korean War, and I have only the utmost res esteem and uh, respect for him. Why was he a good minister? As a Navy man, now as an admiral, why was he a good minister? He got out and traveled. He beat the, uh, he beat the bases. He traveled overseas to our missions. He was aboard our ships. He was in our submarines. He, uh, he knew what the men and women were going through, and uh, he understood the complexity of the missions. And... Uh, he stood there for us, and uh, those were these. These have been hard years, and uh, a lot of decisions have been taken under his watch. So big boots to fill. I say all our ministers in the federal government work very hard, and all wear big boots and fill them well. Um, you were talking about tough times. Uh, these are times of restraint again in, in Canada. Is Navy going to get smaller? I, I'm not working on a, a shrinking Navy. Uh, <laughs> I certainly don't want to be the one to put up their hands and say, hey, honey, I shrunk the Navy. But uh, what we're working on is changing the processes, working on innovation, productivity. Uh, it's not about working our people harder. It's about looking at all those legacy processes that, that cost money and, and uh, bog people down in, in the business of the day. And make sure they're focused on operations and the effect of the fleet. And uh, I think we'll be all right. The, is that a maybe, though? M m might it add up to less money? Less no, there's no maybe in that. No. There's no maybe in that. The no. business is so complex, so deep that um, it's always evolving. Uh, we pride ourselves in being able to meet the enemy face to face, uh, to meet challenges on the high seas and disasters and uh, uh, humanitarian aid missions, and develop ourselves to fit the circumstances. And I don't think there's much different looking at the uh, the economics of our times to succeed at this mission. Who is the enemy? Who is the enemy? Well, the enemy is the environment some days when it's uh, storms on the high seas and having to deal with search and rescue. Um, you know, the, the, uh, the enemy is uh, whoever the government of Canada decides is the, uh, to send us out to face. But uh, right now, it's, uh, we've got a pretty good uh, global order, and we continue to contribute to that global order.
Obviously, the Navy's future now is tied to the ship's contract, and there's a lot of expectation and hope. A lot of people, though, are worried that the ship's contract might, might shrink. Uh, now, I, you've obviously been thinking about this. Any chance that's going to happen? I, have, I can make no comment on that, Steve, except to say uh, my role in, in all that business is to uh, develop strategic partnerships with uh, people like the shipyards that have been picked for the, mm. the National Shipbuilding Procurement Strategy and to contribute to the statement of requirements for all those new classes. It does seem like some of the initial excitement about the contract has faded, though. People are worried that it may not happen. Do you, do you sense that? Uh, I think it's quite the opposite. Um, one, we're in the middle of the Halifax class modernization, which is leading us as a bridge to that future fleet. Right. Two, it's historic in its proportions that we have three ships classes, new ship classes in project design, right now with the, by the government of Canada with mm -hmm. our defense partners. Three ship classes: mm -hmm. Arctic offshore patrol ship, joint support ship, and the uh, Canadian surface combatant. The Irvings have just hired a retired American vice admiral to run their shipyard. Do you know him? No, sir, but that's a brilliant decision. I can <laughs> <laughs> putting an admiral in charge. Yes, sir. Can't be a bad decision. <laughs> this is the admiral in charge of the East Coast Navy, Rear Admiral John Newton, and he's a Halifax man. And we're delighted to have you here. We'll be seeing you again, Admiral. Thank you very much, Steve. Thanks, indeed.